First are your five unknown cases. Case number one. Case number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. And this is a gradient echo in and out of phase. And I want you to focus on the right adrenal gland. The answers to these cases will be embedded in the lecture. So let's first talk about renal masses, characterization renal masses. You first got to decide whether it's cystic or solid. If it's cystic and it has benign features, such as thin septa, fine calcification, or high attenuation, these are benign cysts, Bosniac type 1 or 2. If it has suspicious features, such as thick septa, chunky calcification, or enhancing nodules, Bosniac type 3 or 4. For the solid lesions on oral boards, first thing you gotta check is fat. If there's obvious fat, it's angiomyolipoma and there's no differential. Without obvious fat, renal cell carcinoma or other type of malignancy. So as you all know, Bosniak has classified cysts in five categories. One is bonai simple cysts, two minimally complex cysts, 2F are the kind of lesions between two and three, Three are complex cysts, and four are malignant cystic neoplasm. In everyday practice, if it's Bosnia one or two, you don't have to do anything. And if it's uh, Bosnia three or four, meaning possibly malignant complex cyst or probable cystic renal cell carcinoma, the management is surgical resection. Bosnia one cyst are simple benign cysts with thin wall, no septa, no calcification, and a fluid density between minus 20 to positive 20 Hounsfield unit, and obviously no enhancement. Here's an example of a simple cyst of 7 Hounsfield unit, Bosnia type 1 cyst, benign. Type 2 cysts are minimally complicated cysts, but are still benign. They may have hairline thin septa, possibly minimally perceived enhancement, fine calcification in walls or septa, short segment of slightly thickened calcification, and a uniform high attenuation such as hyperdensis, but it should be less than three centimeter for it to be categorized as Bosnia II. So here's an example. There is a large cystic lesion from the left kidney, and then there is a suggestion of calcification within a barely perceivable um, septa. On ultrasound, you can see the septa better with calcification. Here's a septic cyst, Bosnia type 2, benign lesion. Here's another example. You see a curvilinear calcification on the non-contrast CT, and on the contrast CT appears to be within the wall of the cyst. Benign appearing against cyst with calcification, Bosnia type 2. How about this case? Here's an intrinsically dense lesion from the left kidney on the non-contrast skin, and on the post-contrast skin, there's no obvious enhancement. This is a hyperdense cyst, less than three centimeter. Again, Bosnia 2 benign. Bosnia 2F, lesions are those that require follow-up imaging. They may demonstrate features such as increased number of septa, minimal smooth thickening of the wall or septa, but no enhancing solid components. And for high density cysts greater than three centimeter, they also fall under the type 2F. So on oral boards, if you see something that are not quite type 2, you can always think about categorizing it as 2F and I recommend follow up. Be a safe radiologist on oral boards. Bosnic 3 cysts are complex cysts that are indeterminate by imaging, so they have features with thickened irregular wall septa, enhancement of the wall septa, chunky calcifications. You see two examples here on your left. It's a cystic lesion with irregular chunky calcification. On your right is a large cystic mass with irregular enhancement of the wall and a septum, possibly malignant complex cysts type 3 needs surgical resection. Type 4 cysts are malignant cystic masses with enhancing soft tissue components adjacent to but independent of wall or septum. So here's a case of a predominantly cystic lesion with internal enhancing solid component. This is a cystic renal cell carcinoma. Bosnia type 4 needs surgical resection.
And then obviously you have the frankly solid enhancing mass, as in this example from the right kidney renal cell carcinoma. And here's the simple cyst on the left. So here's the rule, a solid enhancing mass without obvious fat is a renal cell carcinoma until proven otherwise. In terms of staging renal cell carcinoma, what's relevant for oral boards is to know the stage three and four. Stage three is divided into vascular invasion, nodal metastasis, and the reason we make the distinction is because of the different prognosis between the two, and obviously distant metastasis. So on oral boards, it's not enough to stop when you identify a renal cell carcinoma, always look for other findings uh, so you can give a proper staging. So here's an example, T1 weighted postgadolinium image, demonstrating a solid enhancing renal cell carcinoma on the right, and did you notice the tumor thrombus expanding the right renal vein? So renal cell carcinoma with renal vein invasion, stage 3A. Here's another case of CT, solid enhancing left renal mass consistent with RCC, and did you notice the left renal vein tumor thrombus? Again, renal vein invasion. Here's an example on MR, right renal cell carcinoma, and then tumor thrombus in the IVC extending all the way into the right atrium. It's important to let your surgeons know because the surgical management is different. How about this case? Here we see a predominantly cystic lesion with solid enhancing component, looks like a cystic renal cell carcinoma, but don't stop here, look for other findings. Here, did you notice the retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy? So this will be a renal cell carcinoma with lymph node metastasis, stage 3B. Another case of renal cell carcinoma from the left kidney with conglomerate retroperitoneal adenopathy. Look further down, you see a big pelvic sidewall lymph node. That will be a distant uh, nodal mass this will be a stage four disease. Again, always look for other findings when you diagnose a renal cell carcinoma. Differential diagnosis for a solid renal mass without obvious fat is a renal cell carcinoma, renal transitional cell carcinoma, lymphoma, or metastasis. Renal transitional cell carcinomas most frequently occur in patients with current or prior bladder cancer. Imaging patterns include polypoid filling defects, circumferential wall thickening, infiltrating or discrete mass, which can mimic a renal RCC, and frequently caliceal dilatation. Here's an example of a renal TCC with nodular enhancing mass in the renal pelvis and the caliceal dilatation, typical of a renal transitional cell carcinoma. Here's a case of an infiltrative mass involving the left kidney. Again, another pattern of renal TCC. How about this case? Looks like there is an ill-defined mass in the left kidney. It may represent a renal cell carcinoma, but the infiltrative nature and indicates that this you should at least include a differential diagnosis of a renal transitional cell carcinoma. So now let's move on to this case. You see multiple ill-defined masses in both kidneys. What are the differential considerations? Is it multifocal um, RCC metastasis or lymphoma? If you look higher up, a large lung mass on the right and a pleural metastasis. So this is a case of renal metastasis. How about this case? Again, multiple ill-defined masses in the right kidney. If you look further down, there's a large solid mass uh, centered around the left iliac wing. Is this renal RCC with metastatic disease or met other type of primary malignancy with metastasis to the kidney or lymphoma? So this mass was biopsied and it turns out to be um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Renal lymphoma has a CT incidence of 3 to 8% with a much higher autopsy incidence. Primary renal lymphoma is rare. CT patterns of renal lymphomas include multiple small masses spread from retroperitoneal disease, diffuse infiltration, perinephric encasement, or single homogeneous mass. The classification is somewhat arbitrary and may be mixed. So let's look at this example. Here's a solid left renal mass. And I'll also notice the mass in the spleen, renal lymphoma in this case. The next case shows infiltrative bilateral renal masses with retroperitoneal adenopathy. 
another presentation of renal lymphoma. How about this case? You see the um, conglomerate retroperitoneal adenopathy that extends to encase the left kidney. This is another presentation of renal lymphoma with peritonephric encasement. Now let's move on to benign renal masses. As you all know, renal oncocytoma is one of them. Here's a case on your left, patient with large solid mass with central stellar scar, a fairly classic feature for oncocytoma. But what about this case, a small enhancing mass in the left kidney? For all the world, it looks like a renal cell carcinoma, but in this case, it's renal oncocytoma. On angiography, they have a characteristic spoke wheel pattern of the vessels. Oncocytoma is a rare benign tumor, can be difficult to distinguish with RCC. Radiologic features include central stellar scar and the spoke wheel pattern vessels on angiography. But it's very important to remember that you cannot distinguish prospectively RCC from oncocytoma. And on oral boards, if you see something that looks like oncocytoma, you can suggest the diagnosis, but always say that the renal cell carcinoma cannot be excluded and a resection is warranted. How about this case, solid enhancing left renal mass? Is it an RCC? It turns out that this is another case of renal oncocytoma, again, in emphasizing the difficulty of differentiating these two tumors. Now let's move on to the um, fatty masses, um, two cases of uh, masses with macroscopic fat characteristic for renal angiomyolipoma. Angiomyolipoma, so sort of benign hematomas tumors, 80% are sporadic with 20% a syndrome associated, which we'll talk about later. They're composed of blood vessels, muscle, and a fat, and 95% contain macroscopic fat. So another rule is that the solid renal mass that contains macroscopic fat is an angiomyolipoma. No real differentials, and on oral boards, a solid mass that you see, look for the macroscopic fat. If you see it, you're done. Here's a case, T1 without and with fat saturation. On your um, left, you see a um, T1 hyperintense mass rising from the left kidney. And on the image with fat saturation, there's drop of signal consistent with um, fat, and this is a case of renal angiomyolipoma. CT diagnosis of AML, again, is a well-defined cortical mass, typically less than five centimeter, and macroscopic fat is, again, virtually diagnostic. CT attenuation of fat should be minus 20 pounds per unit and may require thin section CT. How about this case? On your right, you see a predominantly solid enhancing mass from the left kidney for all the world looks like renal cell carcinoma. The non-contrast CT, you're wondering, could this be a spot of fat? And in fact, it is a spot of fat, but is this an AML? No, this is in fact a re fat containing renal cell carcinoma. Sometimes renal cell can entrap a little bit of fat or can result from osseous metaplasia. Um, this is not a real diagnostic pitfall with this much solid component, you would call this renal cell carcinoma. So AML versus renal cell carcinoma, again, is not usually a diagnostic pitfall. On your left, you see a predominantly fatty mass from the left kidney, and on your right, you see a predominantly solid mass with a little ditzo of fat, and you're not gonna call this AML. AML on your left, and fat containing RCC on your right. So let's talk about a few syndromes that you may encounter in Louisville that involves the kidneys. Tuber sclerosis is a complex neuroectodermal syndrome with hematomas in the skin, brain, and kidneys. All the are dominant, but sometimes they're because of new mutations and a 75% mortality by 20 years. In terms of renal involvement, angiomyolipoma in 80% of the cases and 20% of patients with AML actually have tuber sclerosis. 10% of them um, have just simple cysts. 
So there are two cases here of tuber sclerosis on the ultrasound. You see multiple echogenic masses in the kidney, consistent with fatty masses. And on your right, you see CT with bilateral fatty containing masses, consistent with multiple angiomyolipoma in this patient with tuber sclerosis. Von Hippel-Lindahl disease is another autosomal dominant syndrome of the CNS and a visceral tumor. They consist of hemangioblastomas of the retina and the cerebellum, pheochromocytomas, which are often multiple and ectopic, pancreatic cysts and eyeless cell tumors. And in terms of renal involvement, renal cysts are frequently seen, but more importantly, renal cell carcinoma in 25 to 50% and are usually multiple. So here we got a case of a solid enhancing right renal mass consistent with RCC and multiple cysts in the pancreas von Hippel-Lindahl disease on oral boards. Look for the other findings in other organs when you see a renal cell carcinoma as it may be part of the syndrome. How about this case, T2-weighted image, see a heterogeneous mass consistent with renal cell carcinoma from the left kidney and a pancreas that's mostly replaced by cysts. Again, von Hippel-Lindahl disease, this is answer to your unknown case number two. Now some practice cases. How about this case, multiple solid masses in the left kidney, differentials, is it multiple renal cell carcinoma, metastasis, or lymphoma? You give a differential, in this case, it turns out to be multifocal RCC. How about this case, coronal T2 haze, large heterogeneous mass from the left kidney. On the post-GAD T1 images, again demonstrating the renal cell carcinoma with expansion of the left renal vein uh, with tumor thrombus. On lower cuts, again, you see the tumor thrombus in the left renal vein anterior to the aorta and a posterior to the aorta. So this is a renal cell carcinoma with tumor thrombus in a circumaortic left renal vein. So now we got multiple images for this case, bilateral renal masses with hemorrhage, non-contrast CT, showing a right perinephric hematoma, intrinsically dense on the non-contrast CT, and multiple renal masses on the non-contrast. You can uh, suggest that there may be a fat component. Patient went on to get contrast-enhanced MRI, again, demonstrating solid enhancing bilateral renal masses. So is this RCC that has bled, or is it angiomyolipoma that has bled? Uh, oral boards always realize that you can ask for additional imaging if you're thinking about AML. Think to ask for a non-facet and a facet T1-weighted image. So now we have a non-facet T1 image demonstrating T1 hyperintensity in this exophytic right renal mass, which uh, demonstrate signal loss on the fat suppression image. So this is consistent with macroscopic fat in a case of renal angiomyolipoma that has blood causing retroperitoneal hematoma. How about this case? You see multiple tiny hyperintense lesions from the right kidney. Could it be hyperintense proteinaceous cyst or is it a fatty lesion? So we get the post, I'm sorry, we get the T1 with fat saturation and then you see these masses demonstrate signal loss. So these are tiny, multiple angiomyolipomas. And angiomyolipoma is very vascular. A lot of times they demonstrate pseudoaneurysm, which is why they bleed. And the treatment is coil embolization. So in another practice case, a predominantly solid mass from the right kidney and a few dissol of fat. Again, you're not gonna mistake this as angiomyolipoma. This is a predominantly fatty, I'm sorry, predominantly solid enhancing mass. This is renal cell carcinoma until proven otherwise. Fat containing renal cell carcinoma. Here's this case of a predominantly cystic lesion with solid enhancing component. Looks like a cystic renal cell carcinoma, but no, you're not done yet. Look for the other findings. Here's prevascular lymphadenopathy. This is lymph node that is distant, and this is a case of distant metastatic renal cell carcinoma. This is answer to your own known number, case number one. How about this case? It will define infiltrative soft tissue arising from the right renal pelvis involving the right psoas muscle, a typical appearance for renal lymphoma. How about this case? Multiple solid, re solid appearing renal masses in the 
right kidney in a patient with history of TCC, is this multifocal T RCC or metastatic disease or lymphoma? It turns out that this patient has treat a prior BCG treatment and this is renal tuberculosis. Obviously, this is a very rare case and unlikely to get that on oral boards, but always remember the differential for multiple solid renal lesions. Risk factors for RCC include history of RCC, syndromes like VHL, cystic disease of uh, renal dialysis, biopsy of renal masses are usually not indicated unless there's a question whether this is RCC or some other tumor such as lymphoma, TCC, et cetera. Autosomal dominant polycystic disease is not at increased risk for RCC, but they are harder to detect because of the distortion of the renal parenchyma by the cyst. So now let's move on to the adrenal masses. Normal adrenal glands have a lateral and a medial limb, and it looks like inverted Y on coronal image as shown here. Some common adrenal masses include non-functional adenoma, metastatic disease, Uncommon ones include myelolipoma, pheochromocytoma, functional adenoma, and obviously the rare adrenal masses we encounter adrenal cortical carcinoma and adrenal cysts. So our next case is a 26-year-old woman with abdominal pain. Pre-contrast and post-contrast CT shows a fluid density left adrenal mass. This is typical for an adrenal cyst. Another case on ultrasound, cystic adrenal mass with internal echogenicity that looks like calcification and is confirmed by CT. Another case of adrenal cyst. How about this case? MRT1 and a T2 weighted imaging demonstrate right adrenal mass hypo intense on T1 and right on T2 follows CSF signal. Another case of adrenal cyst on MR. They're very rare, 45% are endothelial line and 39% are pseudocysts from hemorrhage, and frequently those are the ones with um, calcification. On CT, obviously they're fluid density without enhancement. On MR, they follow CSF signal, but could be T1 hyperintense if there's internal hemorrhage. Here's our next case, patient with incidental adrenal mass. T1 in and out of face image demonstrate a left adrenal gland mass with components that are T1 hyper intense. On the T1 facet post GAD image and a T2 facet images, the T1 hyper intense component demonstrates signal loss consistent with macroscopic fat, and this is characteristic for adrenal myelolipoma. On CT, again, you see the fat component in this lesion and a similar uh, density compared to the retroperitoneal fat. So myelolipoma, again, is a rare benign tumor composed of myeloid, erythroid, and a fat. This is in contrast to angiomyolipoma in the kidney. They're usually small in the unilateral. They're hyperintense on T1 because of the fat, and they suppress with fat saturation. Obviously, there are fat attenuation on CT. How about this case in history is a patient with congenital adrenal hyperplasia and enlarging adrenal masses. Bilateral large adrenal masses with macroscopic fat characteristic for adrenal myelolipoma. These are giant. This is answer to your unknown case number four. So here's a common clinical scenario you may get on oral boards. You detect an incidental adrenal mass, but the patient has a known primary malignancy. Is it adenoma or is it metastasis? CT criteria for diagnosing adenoma is if you have Hounsfield unit less than 10 to 18 on a non-contrast CT, depending on which study you cite, and they also may demonstrate rapid contrast washout, which is greater than 60% decrease in Hounsfield unit between the portal venous phase and a 15 minute delay, or less than 52 Hounsfield unit on the 10 minute delay. This criteria is used less frequently. Time course of enhancement of non adenoma, they retain enhancement at 15 minutes compared to the adenoma, where there's a significant decreased uh, Hounsfield unit. At fi at 15 minutes. The way you calculate washout, you divide A, which is the decrease in Hounsfield unit, by the uh, Hounsfield unit at portal venous phase to calculate the washout. 
So here are some examples. Incidental left adrenal mass on non-contrast CT, less than 10 Hounsfield unit, diagnostic for adrenal adenoma. Here's another case of a right adrenal mass, Hounsfield unit 42, on the pre-contrast image, so does not fulfill our criteria for adrenal adenoma on the non-con. Give contrast portal venous phase, Hounsfield unit 150, at 15 minutes delay, 45. The washout is 70%. So rapid contrast washout, this is consistent with the adrenal adenoma. And the rapid washout rule is tip, especially useful for diagnosing lipid poor adenoma. MR criteria, signal drop on a post face, which is usually done by visual inspection by uh, comparing to the adjacent uh, skeletal muscle or to um, the spleen, or quantitatively greater than 20% dropping signal intensity between the in and the post phase sequence. So why do adenomas lose signal on the post phase image? Because adenoma has a high concentration of cytoplasmic lipid, where carcinoma has little or no cytoplasmic lipid. We take advantage of the chemical shift imaging property, where there is a small frequency difference between the fat and water protons. At a TE of 2.2 and a 6.6 .6 milliseconds, the fat and water protons, the spin are opposite of each other, so the signal cancel each other, and the image, um, the signal of the lesion is dark. When you have a TE of 4.4 .4 or 8.8 .8 seconds, consider the in-phase imaging, the spin of the water and the fat, they align and produce a bright signal. So again, in-phase imaging, water and the fast signals are additive, therefore bright signal, a post-phase image, water and a fast signal cancel each other, therefore dark signal. Some examples, in-phase imaging and a post imaging of this right adrenal gland mass, you can see it better on the coronal images. Here this mass is a slightly more hyperintense than the adjacent uh, spleen. post face image is darker than the adjacent spleen, so there's a signal drop on the post face image, images and a diagnostic for an adrenal adenoma. Adrenal adenomas are most common adrenal masses, usually not hyperfunctioning usually less than four centimeter, maybe hypo-intense on T2, variable contrast enhancement. And the loss of signal on the post-face images are approximately 90 plus percent accurate for diagnosing adrenal adenoma. And again, to remind you, the comparison is made with skeletal muscle or spleen. A word of caution, do not use liver as a reference as liver can be fatty infiltrated and uh, demonstrate signal loss on the post image itself. So here's a case of a 64-year-old man with renal cell carcinoma, left adrenal mass right on T2, and on the in and a post-face images demonstrate no significant no significant signal loss compared to the skeletal muscle. So not typical for an adrenal adenoma. Patient went on to get contrast enhanced MRI. You can see the renal cell carcinoma on the left better. So in this patient with renal cell carcinoma, this left adrenal mass is metastasis. Adrenal metastases are most common malignancy in adrenal gland, often bilateral, does not lose signal on post face images, and MR is only 85 to 90 percent accurate, therefore guide, CT guided biopsies are still required. Here's our next case, 66-year-old woman with hypertension, T1 in and a post-face image, right adrenal gland mass, no signal dropout compared to the skeletal muscle, not typical for an adrenal adenoma, contrast enhanced image, heterogeneous enhancement, very bright on the T2-weighted image. In fact, light bulb bright, this is um, typical for pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma is a catecholamine producing tumor, 90% in the medulla, usually greater than three centimeter at presentation. And remember, 10% can be bilateral, 10% malignant. Light bulb bright on T2 is classic, but unfortunately not very common. They demonstrate late enhancement because of field feeding vessels and large extracellular space, usually no dropout on a post face imaging compared to the adenoma. So here is your unknown case five, right adrenal gland mass, 
no significant signal dropout on the opposed face image when you compare to the spleen or the skeletal muscle, so not in a typical phonadrenal adenoma. This patient has hypertension, so you look at some additional images. It's a fairly bright on T2 weighted uh, and a single shot image, but not quite light bulb bright. This is a case of pheochromocytoma, again, not always light bulb bright on T2. Now let's move on to this case, large right suprarenal mass, very heterogeneous on CT and the T1 weighted image. On the post-gadolinium T1 sagittal image, you can see the irregular um, peripheral enhancement and a central necrosis. Looks like a very aggressive tumor. This is a case of adrenal cortical carcinoma. And did you notice the liver metastasis? Again, very aggressive tumor. Adrenal carcinoma is very rare aggressive tumor, usually large at presentation, heterogeneous because of hemorrhage or necrosis, and has a propensity to invade the IBC. Here's a CT casing, a woman with right upper quadrant pain, large right adrenal mass, and on the MR, you see the tumor thrombus extending into the IVC. Again, the propensity of adrenal cortical carcinoma to invade the IVC. And the MR is very good for assessing the IVC extension. Another CT case of adrenal cortical carcinoma, large heterogeneous mass, very ugly. Did you notice the IVC thrombus? And invasion to adjacent organs, the left kidney and the spleen distant metastasis to the liver. Aggressive tumor. Some practice cases now. Coronal T2 haste image, large left adrenal gland mass with signal intensity similar to the retroperitoneal fat. And on the in-face and the post-face image, um, there's no signal loss. But on the T2 with fast saturation, a post gadolinium with fast saturation, there's signal loss of this mass characteristic for macroscopic fat in adrenal mass. This is adrenal myelolipoma. And a, a macroscopic fat does not demonstrate a signal drop on the opposed face image because of paucity of water fat interface, and this is in comparison to adrenal adenoma, where it contains microscopic fat with lots of water fat interface and therefore signal loss on the opposed face image. Here's another case, large bilateral adrenal masses, no significant signal loss on the post face image compared to the spleen, so not adrenal adenoma. Differentials, think about adrenal metastasis adrenal lymphoma, or possibly bilateral pheochromocytoma. This is a patient with renal cell carcinoma, and it turns out to be bilateral adrenal metastasis. Another case of a bilateral adrenal masses, no significant signal drop on the opposed face image when compared to the spleen, so not typical for an adenoma. And on the uh, contrast enhanced um, MR heterogeneous enhancement, very bright on the T2-weighted images, light bulb bright. This is a case of bilateral field chromocytoma. How about this case? Incidental right adrenal mass demonstrate significant signal dropout on the opposed face imaging characteristic for benign adrenal adenoma. How about this case? Again, large bilateral adrenal masses, nonspecific, does not demonstrate signal dropout on the opposed face image. Again, differential will include adrenal lymphoma, metastasis, or possibly pheochromocytoma. This turns out to be a case of adrenal lymphoma. So on oral boards, think about, look at the images and give a differential. Um, you may get additional history, which may direct you to the correct answer, but if you give a reasonable differential, that's enough. Now, the next case is a patient with abdominal pain, large right adrenal mass, in face and opposed face image, T1 bright. Is it fat or is it hemorrhage? Went on to get an image T2 with fat saturation, still persistently bright. So this is not fat. In fact, these are internal hemorrhage and debris within a right adrenal pseudocyst. This is answer to your unknown case number three. Another case of an incidental left adrenal mass does not have signal dropout on the opposed face image when you compare to the skeletal muscle or the spleen, so not typical for an adrenal adenoma. This patient 
um, went on to get some more images. Um, here's fairly bright mass on T2 weighted image with fast saturation and a homogeneous enhancement post gadolinium. Differential, this could be adrenal metastasis, a pheochromocytoma. This and turns out to be renal cell carcinoma. And here's a CT of this patient four months later after chemotherapy when you can see the adrenal gland returns to its normal shape. Another case of incidental left adrenal mass on the left and in and post phase imaging demonstrates signal loss compared to the adjacent spleen consistent with a benign adrenal adenoma. And did you notice the fat infiltration on the opposed face imaging? Again, emphasizing the fact that the liver should not be used as a reference when you decide whether there is signal dropout. So take home points, adrenal cyst and pseudocyst, fluid attenuation on CT, follow CSF signal on MRI, but may have bright T1 signal because of internal hemorrhage adrenal myelolipoma and a renal angiomyolipoma contain macroscopic fat. On CT, the Hounsfield unit should be below minus 20. They can be diagnosed with uh, when you compare the FASAD and non-FASAD images on MR. Macroscopic fat does not demonstrate signal drop on a post-phase imaging because of lack of water, uh, positive water fat interface. It's an adrenal adenoma. If the CT Hounsfield unit is less than 10 to 15, it has rapid contrast washout and a signal drop off um, on the opposed face MR images. And to summarize characterization of the renal masses, decide whether it's cystic or solid. Cystic with benign features, Bosnia type 1 or 2, benign, don't do anything. If it has suspicious features, as we discussed, Suspicious cysts, Bosniak 3 or 4, needs to be taken out. Solid masses, when you see it on oral boards, first thing to look for obvious fat. With obvious fat, characteristic for AML, no other differential. Without obvious fat, it's renal cell carcinoma or malignancy, other type of malignancy.